Molecules are amazing things. They're sort of like atoms held together sort of by springs, springs that allow the atoms to move and vibrate. And molecular spectroscopy, as used by Jun and myself here, are basically looking at the frequencies of the motions of these atoms in a molecule. Atoms and molecules, they emit light, they absorb light. In fact, light is the tool that we communicate with the microscopic world of atoms and molecules. We had developed a tool called optical frequency combs for the sake of optical atomic clocks for timekeeping. We can use this to measure molecules, and it wouldn't be funny if we could use this to smell people's breath and tell the health conditions of a particular person. What we've been doing is looking at something on the order of 150 COVID positive and COVID negative participants in this study and looking at their breath samples and looking at all the different frequencies that are absorbed or not absorbed uh, using this frequency comb. I can collect hundreds of thousands of detection channels all at once. And that's why we can detect many different kinds of molecules. Each molecule leaves a bunch of different fingerprints and you can just count how many fingerprints you, you, you have there. You can have a really unambiguous identification of the molecules. But before the machine learning tool was introduced, I really wasn't sure how we we're going to process all that data. So what the machine learning can do is that, like no matter what kind of features you are putting into the machine, that it can look through all of them one by one. It's hard to say whether like, it's caused by this molecule or this molecule, we don't know that. We just like take the entire spectral feature and put it into the machine and the machine will tell us. You just look at all the patterns of thousands or hundreds of thousands of those lines and you try to directly use machine to learn about the difference between COVID positive and COVID negative to see if those lines have any differences in them. And in this way, you can maximize the separation between uh, the measurement results for the COVID positive persons uh, versus that uh, for the negative persons. And it turns out the machine starts to make those predictions with a pretty high accuracy, 85%. It's a perfect marriage between data science and collecting billions of, of molecular spectroscopy information. And, and that's actually much richer than saying, what is the molecular signature of a particular virus? Now that we can see COVID, and we can see some personal attributes as well. We can see whether you have abdominal pain, whether you have a constipation, the breath will tell. And what's interesting is of course, breath changes, unlike your gene. So you could actually see the timeline of your life and tracking your medical history and so on. So I actually think it's like endless possibilities out here. So we want to take this much more, you know, having some medical doctors help us collecting samples from patients who have COPD, for example. But we are not limiting ourselves. You know, could it be lung cancer? Could it be uh, kidney failure? If we can miniaturize these ideas down and have them, let's say, in every hospital, right? The dream would be that you'd walk into a hospital or a doctor's office, and the first thing you'd do is you'd blow in a tube. And then one minute later, it will tell you, you know, here are the conditions of your possible things of your body that you may want to watch out or go for further analysis. I actually am very confident that this tool is going to become one of the best tools out there to be able to do non-invasive diagnosis of your medical conditions. To be able to contribute to basically the evolution of medicine at societal level, that, that would really, that would really move me.